good haircut. We're live. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Bienvenidos. Bonjour. And a very, very happy Mother's Day to moms, daughters, grandmothers, sons, everyone, everywhere, and especially to those here live today with us in Zoom for Cultivating Voices Live Poetry and of a warm welcome to those also joining us live on Facebook. I'm Sandy you know, and I'm the author of Boats for Women from Salmon Poetry. And I'm your host today for our new books showcase, featuring four poets whose books have been or about to be released. We are so glad, I am so glad to be back with you after a one week hiatus. I wanna give a special shout out to last week's guest host, Angela Dribben, and to our spectacular May Day featured and open mic poets who joined us last week. Well, before I introduce our guest poets for today, I just wanna share with you a little bit about Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. We held our first reading on March 29th, 2020 in response to the shutdowns of venues everywhere. And we've developed into an international, intersectional, intergenerational weekly reading series and poetry community now with over 2,600 members worldwide. We alternate weekly readings between our very popular new books showcase that we are showcasing today and our poets focus readings with a themed live open mic. We also occasionally have a special event like next Sunday's reading, Witness, a conversation with three generations of Asian American women poets. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of today's program. Well, it is now my distinct pleasure to introduce um, today's four poets, um, Pratiba Castle, Crystal Stone, Raymond Johnson, and Martina McGowan. I'll introduce each before they read and I'll return with some closing announcements. Our first poet today in the showcase is Pratiba Castle. I, and she originally reached out to me to join the open mic at one point. And I am thrilled that she did when, you know, at the time that she did, her original work really speaks clearly and openly about our need to connect. And she's always exemplified this in her effort to connect with me. So it is always um, such a deep, pleasure to have you here on the program and particularly today to celebrate your new pamphlet forthcoming on the cusp of being released. Here is the formal biography. Pratiba Castle's award-winning debut pamphlet, A Triptych of Birds and a Few Loose Feathers, will be published very soon from Hedgehog Press. Pratiba has published in the Blue Nib, Dreitch, Fragmented Voices, One Hand Clapping, Inspired, Saraswati, Reach, and has work forthcoming in Agenda and Beyond Words. Pratiba was highly commended in various competitions, including the Sentinel Literary Quarterly, and Binstead Arts competitions in 2021. And she broadcasts regularly on West Wilts Radio, the poetry place. Would you please join me with a very warm welcome for our first poet today, Prativa Castle. Thank you, Sandy. I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you to Kim and Sandy. I'm gonna start off um, with a, a poem that speaks of the South Downs, which is where I'm living, 
and it's sort of an invitation to summer to finally come. South Downs. Wolf scents idols me into a random field where sheep take a brief break from munching grass to glance my way. A black face dam fixes me with Satan gaze, transmits a cipher I likely misconstrue, watches as I mount the stile, swing my leg across as if the worn wood is the saddle of an imaginary mare set to canter me off into a fey mist distance. Beyond the field, a path through the woods, petals open into a copse. Incense of wild thyme, garlic, blooming beneath my feet. Blousy clematis tosses into a breeze, wafting the fantasy of a cuckoo. Dryads lean in, anoint me with murmured prayers. I drift in wonder at a feather amongst the leaves from the red kite keening in the blue, flash above the brook of turquoise, shadow splash of heron. So I come, thank you. Um, my heritage is Irish. Um, and some of my poems, quite a number of poems in uh, a triptych of birds speaks of that Irish heritage. This one is loosely in, uh, inspired by my mother. Wild Lass of Kells. She shuffles on the curb outside O'Shaughnessy's corner of Kelly and Dunleven Road. Her eyes, the colour of Our Lady's veil, scorched bluer by her copper curls. On the lookout for the da, her task of a Friday night to wheedle the wages off of him before he sets out on the lash. Glad of a break from the chores, socks like a flock of crows forever jostling, Hand me down frocks in need of hems, pants snagged on barbed wire, nails atop of farmers' walls and fences. Herself, the firstborn of a baker's dozen, endless mopping up of spats, snail snots, scabby porridge pots. Licks of laughter, yellow light, sidle out the gaping door into the night let out by culchies on their shuffle to the bar. Egypts with purple slurs for eyes, glances tossed her way. Collection plate clink of small change at Sunday mass. The odd time, a flash of lust. The most times, shame. A rare smile to build her up. Sure, aren't you a dot now, Delia, looking out for your mammy? God bless yourself. Eyes cast down, pious daughter of the virgin. Lord love the child in her wilting dress. Miraculous blue medal clipped to the chest of her tatty cardigan. An occasion of sin, to be sure, Slovenes might take advantage of. Till she glances up. That glare, brazen as hell's fires, from the child of Mary of the scry eye, seventh daughter of a seventh son, flame hex of a wild blood tinker, skipping off home to a last scald of the pot, wedge of soda fall thick with dripping, her pocket is a clatter of coins, only the lighter by a bleary-eyed pint. Thank you. So the next one is called Sparrow Love, and it was inspired by a couple of sparrows that I watched one summer that just captivated me and I just fell in love with them. 
the female flirts her tail, flamenco flaunts of a doyen cute at charm. Thumbs up for the male, a coy first timer, by the looks of his several efforts till the deed is done. When she whisks into the nest to sort, I presume the housekeeping, he is quick to follow. Now he's got the hang of things, no doubt eager to improve. A flutter till he arrows from beneath the eaves to return in a tail's flicker to the drain, where he struts. The bon mot of a small white feather in his beak, proof to the beloved how fine a catch he is. As I dream of its kiss against my cheek, the cot this snowy boon will fashion for its prize of eggs, brown speckle glazed with the suspicion of a sheen, an image drowns my heart. My father, his eyes behind black-rimmed glasses, shiny with incipient grief. Tears I caught the hint of once, the day my mother bundled us into a taxi. Not a mention of it ever, in the access hours I idled with him at the flicks, over milkshakes in the wimpy bar, doughnuts, ice cream cones. Apart from that last day in St. Michael's Hospital, two weeks and not a word, his eyes opened. Fran, I've missed you. An ocean streaming down his cheeks. Here's another one, loosely loosely inspired by my father and um, an Irish tale. Padraig, who drove the snakes out of Ireland. At the allotment, daddy forked the crumbly black earth till the air quaked with anticipation of excess. Me sifting stones in search of treasure. The robin sat pert on the lip of the bucket meant to carry spuds or cabbages, the occasional giggle tickle carrot back to placate the mammy. The bird's eye bright with a lust for worms, his song a crystal cataract of merry. Though none of the seeds we sowed ever showed head out of the sly earth, and we saw nothing of the slow worm daddy promised, so that his name being Padraig too, I guessed he must be a saint, especially when he himself vanished. Though he turned up months later at the end of school, again and again and again, till I had to tell the mammy where the books and toys came from, and that got me sent off to board at St. Bridget's convent, where the head nun was nice to you if your mammy gave her fruit cake in a tin, bottles of orange linctus sherry, a crochet shawl like frothy cobwebs, none of which my mammy could afford, Padraig having banished more than snakes. Sandy, I never checked what time it was when I started. So if you wave at me when I... <laughs> Okay, these are a couple of poems that are inspired by my time in London in the 60s, the swinging 60s. The only one who loves you. Spurning words that echoed like a curse, I stuffed a duffel bag with blister packs of pills. Fan Mary Quant Minis, fantasies of girls threading daisies in the muzzles of guns, fled to the big smoke. In a bedsit by Kensington Gardens, I massacred steak with the mallet of hate, a year on turned vegan. 
pioneer in 68 of pity for pool-eyed cows, sheep, slate-stair place, feigned compassion, strove to prove to myself that I was worthy of love, strutted the nights away with flautists, a harpist whose healer's hands strummed my strings, drummer, his silk-tipped stroke nimble on the snare, callous guitarists plucking tunes from out of smoke drifts, chanted mantras with Ramdas in a basement in Notting Hill, dust in a maid of ale squat, candles, caller gas stove, the one tap drip, drip in the bog beside the back door made out off my head with a sweetheart leaf philodendron, burnt joysticks to placate Kali's hoard of swords, sweeten the vibes, man, stench of cat lit, no one from the Highgate commune I crashed in next, ever emptied. Spooned marmalade from a jar half full, recycled from a skip, Almost believed myself deserving of love, till come the morning I forgot. My heart tenderized with grief, discovering the night my mother died. Love is an ether you can choke or float in. Thank you. Have I time for one or two? One. One? I can't see my one. Okay, so this is inspired by my mother. We had a difficult relationship afterwards. After they took away the body, the nice young men in green uniforms, their eyes shiny, like everyone's that day, their voices the soothe of pigeons on the roof. Best not watch, love, steep stairs, know what I mean, better off in the garden. You shred a forget-me-not, recall the hike up Ben Bulbin Mount, her eyes squinting as she told you about her and daddy. After, once the ambulance has left, at the crown and shamrock, you weep into a glass of Merlot large, fidget the pearl rosary you loosened from her fist. The waitress from County Clare, her eyes the same queer blue of mammies that according to the fancy of the moon flashed crazy like a Kildare mare nodding as you hiccup how you'd dropped by for tea with a batch of scones to find herself abed. Asleep, you'd thought, till you saw her fingertips, a ruin of fallen plums. The napkin sops, a Glencar gush of tears, your heart of ice you took for hatred, melting. Loosed like one of Grandad's racers, only this was a race already run. Thank you. Thank you so much. What a what a beautiful reading to start us off today. That also just happens to be Mother's Day. Oh, the precision and song of your poems. Oh, I, 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 I just marvel at that. Beautiful. The pamphlet forthcoming from Hedgehog Press from Satipa Castle is a triptych of birds and a few loose feathers. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so very much.
Well, my friends, next, if you happen to be looking for inspiration from a TED Talk, look no further from a person whose wisdom may belie their numerical age. This happened to me when I discovered Crystal Stone's TED Talk, The Transformational Power of Poetry, last year while I was one day just on, you know, I was just on the internet and I came across this TED Talk about poetry that had come out in April of uh, 2018. I was, I sat in rapture and after I immediately contacted her in the annoying way that sometimes I do with you, with people, you may be one of them that I have knocked on your door out of the blue on Facebook uh, to ask if she would be willing to read. And fortunately for us today, she said, yes. Well, here is the more formal biography of Crystal Stone. Crystal Stone is the author of four poetry collections, Knock Off Monarch from Dawn Valley Press 2018, her new book that she will be featuring today, All the Places I Wish I Died from Clash Press 2021. And she has two books forthcoming, Jim Bras from Really Serious Literature and Civic Duty, which is forthcoming from Vegetarian Alcoholic Press next year. Well, Crystal received her bachelor's from Allegheny College, which has a terrific, terrific undergraduate program in literature. And I happen to, uh, in creative writing, I happen to know. And the Young Writers Seminar, she received her BA in 2015 and her MFA from Iowa State University in 2020. She formerly served as managing editor for Mind Murals and was the poetry editor for um, Flyway Journal of Writing and Environment. I love, I actually love Flyway. I have copies here in my house. Her poetry has previously appeared or is forthcoming in the Three Penny Review, the Hopkins Review, Salamander, Poetry Daily, Writers Resist, Drunk Monkeys, Cold Noon, Poets Reading the News, Jet Fuel Review, Southward Journal Online, and many others. Would you please welcome Crystal Stone? Thank you so much. I feel like a little embarrassed. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read a couple of poems from my um, book, All the Places I Wish I Died. Um, this was actually my MFA thesis, and then it ended up getting picked up before I graduated, so it was super exciting. I was like, yay. <laughs> So my first poem, so it's Mother's Day, but I have a very different relationship with my mother. So um, my first one's gonna be kind of sad and I don't really celebrate mothers. So I'm very sorry to all the mothers here, but we all have different life experiences, right? Um, this one's called Take It From a Rufus Colored Sparrow. What knows to love, not a mother, cowboy, cowbird dropping her young into another mother's nest. She watches nearby for signs of abuse, but never interferes until her child is murdered. Most of the time, the chick eats, then grows, eventually flies to another's nest still incapable of affection. Like she knows she is adopted, bigger than the rest, born to bully. Now she is older, feathers thinning. Two children come and gone, orphaned, and she still flies solo from one man to another always traveling, always following, all of her children loners, all of her offspring singing another bird's song. This next one is called Days of 2000. I was never good at swimming like the rest of my family. That year I wore swimmies on my arms to keep my head and shoulders above the edge. 
And I protected my Barbies the way I protected myself, but my brothers still managed to pull their heads off and I still managed to tie their hair into knots when I meant to untangle it. And isn't that how life is? More knots when we mean to untangle. My hands are strands more often than they are combs. When I told him I didn't think I could love anyone this way again, I meant that loving him felt like that day in 2000 when my lungs emerged as chlorine waters. I had already gotten out of the pool, grabbed a carrot from the garden, decided to go in. But when my brother threw my Barbie in the water, I didn't realize my arms were bare. I jumped and the water was the foggy horizon of my last sunset. My dad's face turning red. You could have died. What were you thinking? Not about myself. What I mean is sometimes we're so focused on someone else, we don't notice we stepped into something we might not come back from. I don't like pools for the same reason I don't like love. They are stronger than my body is. The thoughts swim right out of my head now. I live in a place so windy, the water at the fountain blows right out of my mouth. And this too feels like a kind of drowning, gasping for something I need but can't have. Uh, <laughs> Self-portrait in a thunderstorm. Yellow skies and no storm sirens. Hail bursts large enough to break my window. I think about letting nature in to clean my carpet. The thunder is a heartbeat mine. My eyes June with longer days, they warm and lengthen. The prairie grasses outside look blue because my eyes want them watering beaches instead of streets. I want my bed to boat my body on the coast I miss. My hair is spring blooms flyways. I've lost so much, many poems, always listening to others. They tornado my mind empty of my words. I don't wanna sound like the men I've talked to, only the women, only the earth, only the grasses, wind, hail, and sky. Portrait of the alcoholic's daughter. I never know until it happens. The day you start to understand the hollow Cello in my living room, dusty. Candles on my dresser, clothes picked from others' discards. I find love the same way. I try to imagine it's possible to build a house of straw when it's all there is to use. The gypsy moth can't think about shelter. Her young birth parasitic flies and die. My mother lit red candles on the floor with faces of the saints. She didn't bring them the day I saw my first ghost. I was six walking through the narrow motel hallway in the middle of nowhere. There was blood on the headboard. Mom told me to stop telling stories. My brother was silent, nothing to say when this happened. Not the first day I woke up in the middle of a nightmare, her screaming, why aren't you happy? I felt guilty ever since. My brother begs me to stop. He loved her in a way I did not until I read the poem she wrote about me 10 years before I was born. She died seven years ago now in her bed next to a man she didn't love, but I sleep more soundly next to you than I ever have next to someone else and prepare for the sun to argue with the moon about what time it is, always trying to outshine the other chronically far apart. I have two more poems left. I think I still have time. Yeah. Okay. Poem with depression. He said eat a cat or breakfast, he said. Bigger, beautiful, same thing, he said. How dare you love isn't a reason, he said, you stay. He said, drink my tears, I don't have any, he said. I did it for you, your love is broken. He said, here's some gas money. He said, here's a fig, your vagina is tight. He said, flowers. He said, don't let them drown. He said, there's a darkness inside you, it isn't me. He said, I'll pay you to quit. He said, $5 less, you won't kill the bees. He said, I have guns in the house, don't snoop. He said, it's my house, you just have the key. He said, you will remember me, but how? He said, you're the bed I'm in. He said, I'm not angry anymore. He said, I'm losing, are you? He said, fewer questions, is hard to talk. He said, you're using me, I don't know how. He said, to live, love is pain. He said, the shower is dirty. He said, it didn't used to be this way. He said, I taped it up, the roaches came out. He said, I know you're tired, let's recess. He said, here's some aspirin. He said, no, no, that's too much. He said, come on, here's a drawer, climb in. 
So I usually kind of split up the poems I read from my first and second books and some new stuff, but I know this is like specifically to showcase our new books. So um, I apologize if they don't come across as like, like performance pieces. I sort of like expect it to be like read, but I'm doing the best. <laughs> this last one's called no New Beginnings, Hi Bun, okay. Um, do you guys, it, the form of the Hi Bun is a prose poem with a haiku at the end. He has four laughs, but one is silent. I have only three and all of them are loud. I used the first one, I used one the first time we kissed. The sound was American the way I say his name. He doesn't mind. Sometimes he even tells me it's cute. I stuck a quill egg inside my body today because loving him makes me itchy. He doesn't notice if he feels this way too. It's not his insides that burn. Lucky him. The cells in my cervix are precancerous. My chances of getting cancer are higher if I smoke. My doctor tells me even just one cigarette. I tell her, don't worry, but it's hard to write poems when you're falling in love. I use an adverb every time I imagine his smile, like I need it very much. Like anyone certainly cares about the details, regards the description of even small motions. Instead of kill two birds with one stone, some insist feed two birds with one scone. But I have no interest in nesting even though it is winter. We hyphenate our lips, not our names. We see stories we already want to tell, not the sun or the trees. When we look up, the clouds are cursive letters. Love is snow, I sled in the debris. Thanks so much for having me here. It's so good to hear all your other poems too, so thanks. Thank you so much, Crystal. And, uh, Crystal's recent book is All the Places I Wish I Died from Clash. Uh, I hope you'll come back and read from those upcoming two books as well. It's amazing to see, you know, we all have different journeys with poetry. And I mean, Pratiba shared, you know, publishing after 60, right? I mean, that's a journey. And your journey, which you eloquently speak in your TED talk, and to have, be, you know, be publishing at your age is also a testament to poetry's um, strength and how it helps us you know, navigate our, navigate our days. So I, I love, um, this is what I really appreciate about cultivating voice as live poetry is the intergenerational aspect of the reading series. So I thank you for being here and my friends, honestly, please spend, if you wanna have a transformative experience, spend 14 minutes and 10 seconds with Crystal's TED Talk on YouTube. That's how much I'm paying attention, Crystal. It's 14 minutes and 10 seconds. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we next move to another person with whom I had the good fortune of meeting when I was paired to read as a featured reader last fall for the Cactus Reading Series out of Placitas, New Mexico, hosted by our dear friends, Jules Nyquist and John Roach. After hearing Ray's vibrant and poignant poetry from his new book, Brother Sunset, I, I honestly hoped we'd get to re, re, reunite here on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. And today happens to be for me, that joyous day that we get to reunite. Well, here is the more formal biography. Ray John, Raymond Johnson, New Mexico poet and woodworker. If you look in the background, you might see some evidence of the woodworking um, in Ray's Zoom screen. Raymond Johnson, New Mexico poet and woodworker, grew up in Milwaukee during the 1950s 
and earned a bachelor's degree in romantic languages from the University of, Was of Wisconsin. In the early 80s, he moved to Albuquerque from New York City. And for many years, Ray taught in the Albuquerque public schools. A lifelong gardener, outdoorsman, craftsman, and furniture maker. Johnson has been writing poetry for over 50 years and is the author of Swoosh of Blue Herons from Duende Press 2017. And as I mentioned, his latest collection is Brother Sunset from Jules Poetry Playhouse in 2021. Thank you, Ray, and welcome to Cultivating Voices. Well, thanks a lot, Sandra. Appreciate it very much. Um, just a, one correction. The, the name of the first book was um, Swoosh of Heron Wings. And um, the second book is published by uh, John and Jules at Poetry Playhouse out in Placitas. I'm uh, living above the Rio Grande River, um, look, overlooking Corrales, a uh, nice farming village uh, just north of Albuquerque. And um, it being Mother's Day, I'd like to dedicate my portion of this uh, uh, wonderful gathering uh, to my mother, Betty Jane Johnson, who uh, passed away in 1994. And uh, what I could do in her memory and for a gift for her, I loved her dearly, um, is to begin with a poem that uh, interprets, I guess you would say, her favorite human being, which was uh, Warren Allen Johnson, my father. And so the, the poem is called Rain Dancer. My father was a rain dancer. He walked between drops, was dry in his daily exchanges, in his long dreams lured growth out of everything. My father would wear a black hat just to evoke Zorro, from his allies and rain followed him up the desert Oroyo. My father would meet me among boulders where we would talk about essence and meaning. He didn't lecture. He was too shy for that, but he would bring the rain down to emphasize a point like death is not a barrier, but an opening. My father encouraged the timid out of their hiding. He spoke a hush word with his presence a presence understood and lifted from the smallest particulars of life. He was a rain dancer without form. Ethereal drops would cool the brow and set us to wondering why we cry at times with pain and laugh so buoyantly at the drop of a hat as when he tweaked reality with a smirk, a pun. There always are people tucked in the corners of the world who honor rain dancers and set up altars in the mind to remind them of blessed liquidness, an opportunity to be aware. The rain dancer chooses his time to gesture toward the inexplicable and precipitate over a stand. His is a draw toward unity without excess, a lilac leafing, a subtle musical fragrance, my father, the rain dancer. And dad died in uh, 2004. They had a wonderful, wonderful relationship, raised uh, 10 of us, uh, and I'm about the fourth oldest, but no longer, we have a few missing who have gone, gone to the greater, greener pastures, as they say. So uh, here's a poem called Sweet Old Navajo. Every um, Labor Day, we have a wood bat softball tournament up in Gallup, New Mexico. And it's basically, it's on Navajo land, but it's in Gallup, right? And this is for Nimishke. He being a friend and he tapped into Navajo soul. Sweet old Navajo. I play on your land, sweet old Navajo with tired joints. Your cloudy eyes forever see the other side of what we ballplayers agree is the diamond. 
brushing shoulders in the infield, I thank you for your gracious gaze. Open vistas on red mesas you've spun for us, for telling storms fast approach. You've opened your ancestors' door, and I thank you. Coach Grandfather, let me catch you in a double play or tag me out at home. Oh, if Kit Carson ever knew. Too bad he fell into tortured violence on the field of manifesting destiny. So much to gain, so much to loom, lose before our seventh inning stretch. Sweet old Navajo, you send your early morning running sun to our growing city. Dashing quickly round bases, barely do deer keep up. He slides into home, which once again is his for the season. And we thank you, grandfather. That old boy's still living too. I mean, they, yeah, I think he's in his 90s and he's got his sons playing up in Gallup. So hopefully we can get to it again this year. It's always a good occasion with the uh, old seniors getting together around the great American sport, huh? Softball. Newport to Ensenada, hook, line and sinker. There's a race you can take if you get on a crew from Newport to Ensenada. It's a sailboat race all night long. It's all downwind down to Ensenada, Mexico. I'm bitten by the sea, stayed afloat by swells, rolled under with dolphin dorsal pointed to depths. Riso's dolphin surfaces on dark sea like Moby Dick, medicine mammal from deep below. Southern wind stiffens and we push on through night to rendezvous with mist and salt spray at sunrise expecting Bogart to appear with deep horn resounding. Pelican glides under our bow, moonrise at sunset. Whatever conveys us water and air, we use wisely down or up wind smartly harnessed, conveniently deployed, prepared for unpredictability, we jibe with dolphins. We cut away through salt spray to safe harbor. I'm bitten by the sea. Thank you. Um, we're gonna stay on the ocean here for a little bit. And this is called 2,400 miles from shore. Today I claim Pacific and Hawaii as mine. Salt waves and sea rhythm, body floating, body surfing, mana forms me like incandescent fireball dropping into sea sunsets. Yesterday, Pacific coast intimidated me, slammed me into shore of ancient lava flow, turned me over, held me down, demanding all I own. She claimed the bruised and humbled me. Hawaiian jogger stops above the pounding surf, arms extended with bowed head at day's end, singular pose while dodging tourists skirt his solemn stance. Up the, old, up the way old man turtle beaches, eyeing me with old and final wisdom. I confess ignorance having just arrived, his time frame a click over from mine. Prepare for sting of sea urchin, one knee bouncing off sea floor and tide pool sloshing. Whales breach, roll, cavort, while tails crash. I again claim the Pacific and become greener than coffee fields, marijuana plots and organic ash soil. Did you ever boogie board your way into waves? Body surf into submersion? Access to golden coast, to blue green shoreline, not just for resorts, golf courses and privileged leasers, but always for first peoples, fishermen on outriggers and palm weavers. Deliver your blessing at full moon and high tide, kahuna of the free soul, mana of earth. 
you guys got to get down to Hawaii and never went there. I tell you, thank you. I like the dawn. This takes place here in the valley. I'm not in the valley. I'm on the Mesa. Corrales is in the valley. <clears throat> Albuquerque is in the valley. You got a north and a south valley. And then you got these wonderful um, farms all up and down the river that are still being played with and used. I like the dawn. I like the dawn when night transforms to soft light and daytime shadows, sunrise playing over sandias and corrales, everything taking form, sagebrush with dreadlocks dangling, large stones on sand and gray pebbles accenting brown tone foreseen with mind's night eyes. I like when day begins with its storehouse of activities, amplitudes and outcomes infused with clear intent. Day's small cosmic events focus on process through blessing hands, turn willow branches to walking sticks, medicine for health and vision, willingness and will. I like the dawn. So I got three more for you. Uh, thank you very much. This, uh, this is always cool. You know, you enter different time periods in your life. I'm 73 in about a month. And um, you enter these areas where you've never met these people on a screen before, or let alone at home or in the valley. So I see all your faces and I see a lot of black with names on them and I realize that we have this communication thing going on that'll go beyond me. Now my my daughter-in-law is here today, Katie Johnson Gottlieb, and she's gonna give birth to her first girl. My son's gonna be a father and I'm gonna be a grandpa. So this is for <laughs> there she is. Take a look. Echo <laughs> cool. So I'll see you soon, Katie. This is called Koyana Skazi Indicator, uh, New Year's Hallucination. Now Koyana Skazi is a Hopi term meaning life out of balance. And um, Gottfried Reggio made three films that joined together on these uh, Hopi concepts and words and vocabulary about uh, the earth and human beings relationship with it. And um, there's no dialogue, no monologue in the whole three films. It's wonderful, powerful um, uh, video with uh, Philip Glass doing a minimalist uh, sound score on all three. Coyanes got the indicator New Year's hallucination. A pile of dead coyotes found just outside Las Cruces, New Mexico today. <clears throat> Varmints, some call them. A game to kill for size and quantity marked by wooden jaw blocks indicated dates and places. Fingerprints all over this butchery, primitive, unthinking, quite scary, not even pelts, bones, meat used, no sanctity and cruel act, life out of balance, tipping to extreme, piling up coyotes. Be careful, little brothers. Hay hombres locos y violentos quienes like unschooled boys kill for excitement, stay in the shadows, cuidanse. Thank you, climate change. Here's climate change. And this really happened. It was quail who told me from his perch and jackrabbit who ran with it that we are better than what we show that our youth will not forgive our steadfast march into oblivion. And for emphasis, emphasis Cooper's hawk sky messaged me with cogent proposals spontaneously thought up. I was amazed at such clarity and still am. The answers are right there. All we have to do is apply them, right? So uh, to uh, end my portion and uh, my thanks to uh, Sandra and all the people who make this possible and all you good poets and poetry lovers out there, uh, this is called Let Us. 
let us mellow. Let us chill to the bone. Let us quietly chant universal Bach and beat. Let us not give up, be not too tough. Let us rest before next sunrise. Being utterly silent, let us. Let us bring the sunrise to sleepers, heaping great goodness and unbridled intention for days awakening. Let us protect our vision, which is unique and shared with those turning over from dreams. Let us always and ever go forth with attention so constant that none dare blink. Let us. And I'll say a home to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, first of all, uh, we will be thinking of you and your family in these next five weeks as you await that sacred arrival, that sacred arrival and the many generations that you evoked today from your collection, Brother Sunset. Thank you so much, Raymond Johnson. I can't wait until I can come down and visit all you fine, fine folks in the Albuquerque area. Always come a pleasure. Down. Come on down, girl. Yeah, oh, I, I wish I could. I'd come, I'd come and do it on location right now if I could. <laughs> <laughs> and uh have fun with softball season we'll see you soon well our final reader today now here is a great story i remember seeing the title of martina mcgowan's chapbook i am the rage and being very eager to learn more about this poet Unfortunately, Martina just happened to join one of our open mics and has become a beloved and powerful st staple at our Sunday gatherings, our, our weekly Sunday readings. Well, last month I happened to uh, have a, a, wonder, a rare and wonderful opportunity to go to an intimate reading a morning reading for me, an early morning reading to hear her read and discuss her work. And that afternoon, I went on to my email and saw that the Academy of American Poets had listed her chap, her book, I Am the Rage, as one of the 25 picks to read for National Poetry Month. I couldn't be happier for a, a poet and the poetry and the poetry to have been given that, that accolade, that platform. I'm so happy to uh, be able to introduce to you Martina McGowan and here is the formal biography. Martina McGowan, Dr. Martina McGowan, is a physician, poet, public speaker, and activist in the fight against social, racial, and sexual injustices. She is the author of I Am the Rage, a poetic exploration of living inside injustice, which was released in February of 2021 from Source Books. She is a contributor to the anthology 2020, The Year That Changed America, and is the deputy editor for the Elevation Review magazine. Would you please welcome Martina McGowan? Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Kim, Don, everybody else working behind the scenes. Um, I have a few poems from the book tonight. Uh, the first is Human Enough, formerly called Watch Night. With diminishing confidence, we send out our heart sensors 
to try to remember where our children are supposed to be and at the same time to touch the God that binds us to each other. The God that binds us tries to break that awkward silence now filling our homes as, review, as we review our day and begin to ponder where our children truly are and if they will return. If they return to us unharmed, once again on this eve in a world as the proclamation of their emancipation, reminding them daily that they are not free to be, to love, to breathe, to live in peace, to have time to reflect and contemplate. Reflecting on the days that we have lived and contemplating what the tomorrows may bring, but we already know. Tomorrow will be the same fear. Tomorrow will bring the same fear that we are unequal, that we are still three-fifths human on a good day and on a bad day, not human at all. Never completely whole people, never entirely free from bondage, never free assaults on the body and the mind. The violent assaults of the mind and the streets force mothers and fathers to our knees hold watch night service within our hearts daily. To daily hold watch night service in our hearts to bring our beautiful three-fifths human children home again. The songs of sorrow, songs of oppression, slave songs. Sometimes we simply rock and moan. We stand, we need to pray, sometimes in our private prayer closets, but always in our hearts. Always from our hearts, we reach out to the God that keeps us and binds us to each other, bent low before the one source, broken in prayer and supplication. Backs broken in prayer and supplication tonight and every night is watch night vigil for my child, prayerfully asking on this night, Will my child be human enough to return to me unharmed? Thank you. Uh, the next is a poem written around the time uh, that uh, Breonna Taylor died. Caught between sunlight and shadow, yesterday she lived carefree, perhaps again tomorrow, she thought, except that this day she was murdered in her home, asleep, defending her family, thinking she was free from the shackles and the shadows of history and hate, but we are never free. Yesterday, she went to work and helped people and laughed, remembered brighter days and smiled her beautiful, luminous smile. Yesterday, the shadow had not yet issued the no-knock warrant. Yesterday, the shadow that haunts us all had not yet battered her door in the middle of the night, where she slept, thinking she still belonged to sunlight. Yesterday, she spoke with her mother, transported people to hospital, held their hands, and shared their moments of pain and darkness. Yesterday, she ordered friends. Yesterday, she planned on going out Friday night and maybe Saturday too. Thought about what she could learn at work to improve herself to earn more pay to the ranks. Yesterday, she did not know that the shadow was so very, very close. In fact, only a few hours and eight bullets away. Yesterday, she thought she still had time to glow in the sunlight of a thousand tomorrows. Yesterday, she lived at the right address, not a great address, but hers, where she could walk outside and laugh with friends and hang on to hope. Yesterday, she did not know that the wrong address would become her address, that the person she would be mistaken for would already be locked up, and that there would never, ever be another tomorrow. Yesterday, she did not know that her light would be erased, that she and the shadow would finally become one. Yesterday, her calendar was full of hope, and promise, but no more, never again to think of tomorrow. Her light brutally extinguished by the shadow, shadow that seems bent on destroying us all.
Thank you. Uh, the next is uh, I Am the Rage, the anchor poem from the book. I am the rage. I am the rage whirling just beneath the surface. I am the drift again. I am the promises needed and but never kept. I am the air between light and fueling flames that burn but can neither be consumed nor satisfy its own abiding hunger. I am the glowing embers you can poke and prod with meanness that bubbles over onto the streets. I am the ravenous appetite to destroy something, anything. I am the ever present clanking chains in the belly of the cargo hold, struggling to love myself, a thing you want me to loathe. I am the dismal days and inky skies. I am the niggardly feeling that there is not enough, ever be enough, money, land, freedom, education, life to satisfy us all. I am the outrage that flares every time you say something foolish like, I thought you were already free. I am the disappointment that breathes hot and silent Every time I am dismissed, discharged, dishonored, cast aside, counted as worthless or meaningless. I am the melody that lies inside every Negro spiritual that sings praises of diminishing hopes in this life and a brighter, fairer world in the next. I am the mother who wields the belt that cuts both ways that beats my children in hopes that you will spare their lives. I am the salty tears of anxious mothers, frightened each time her child crosses a threshold, praying for a return that is not guaranteed, like payment of some impossible garnishy on the lives we want for them. I am the furthest point from you, thrashing about in the sea of doom, gasping for air, I am the dark fiber that runs through our shared history that will not allow you to forget, a constant reminder to us both that I can never go home, can never find home. I am the rage running unbridled through the streets. I am the fire this time. I am the rapacious thirst seeking justice for all on these dusky days and obsidian nights. I am the rage that lives within the powder keg of unfulfilled lives, awaiting the spark. I am the rage. I am the lost sheep. I am the muted prayer that we will see each other clearly one day. Thank you. I have two more. <laughs> the next is um, a new story, a new song also from the book. Orphaned by a nation that castigates us at every turn, looking to any individual acts of violence as justification for condemnation of an entire race. How do we get to the middle ground, the golden mean, to find a way forward? A way out of this never ending cycle of outright war and unfettered bloodshed. A way out of this spiral towards the death of all things good, forward, to a way of peace, armistice, without swallowing the bitter pill of business as usual, which only brings us back to strife again. How do we turn down the violence of us versus them, them versus us, mortal enemies on this battlefield of life? What is the escape route from this labyrinth of animosity and remorse if no one will yield? Who holds the secret unction to heal the scars of a crippled nation? How do we find our way to a new story a song, and stop the reiteration? A story that has never furnished us with any real hope of a better tomorrow and explodes or collapses on an extraordinarily regular and predictable path every time we play that old record. Who will hear a new story, a new narrative, a new anecdote? about how we can live in actual and factual harmony and altruism before we destroy ourselves. 
final poem. Mother's Day is uh, one of many complex holidays uh, and I pulled on um, a, a thread that I came up on my, my blog. It's called Song for the Mist Born. The iron after scent of birth, rising from my plate lying in, I yield to the temptation of gazing into your shining face one more time, moving blindly through the maze to the room where they seek to temper your incandescent light. I wait impatiently as they unwrap the swaddling you now wear and not the onesie I have in my bag. Here you are, the product of my now empty womb, prematurely ready for my benediction. So many dreams and visions I've held for you, for us, crawling across the floor, learning to walk, standing, in the swings, winning almost every contest as I proudly stand by. But here you are, chilly to my touch, almost bereft of the warmth, the warmth we once shared, almost beyond the reach of my love. What shall I wish for you now, my love, from my icy and breaking heart? I wish you wings to fly beyond this place and time. I wish you seraphim clanging cymbals at your great rising. I wish you a brightly burning sun to light your way. I wish you starlight to serve as nightlights. I wish you love and light. I wish you Mohammedan angels strumming pipas, sombrero wearing Benedictine monks chanting to comfort you in your loneliness at night. I wish you in violet roving through the cosmos, sitting astride your unicorn stallion. I wish, I wish you were here and not an unredeemable for or afterthought. I wish you all my love, my unforgettable radiant child until we meet again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martina. And um, as you stated, certainly Mother's Day, Father's Day, any of these days are, as you said, complicated, complex holidays that evoke so many different iterations of stories of connection and misconnection. Um, and uh, who better to who better to tell us that story than a doctor that uh, has experienced that that pain of time when time doesn't necessarily manifest the thing the um, the spirit and the soul and the body of one hoped for. Also, thank you for the rest of the work from the collection, I Am the Rage. Um, I've heard the poem many times. Uh, I've heard you read it a number of times now and it never, it ne it never ceases to, to, to really deeply deeply affect me. And that line today, how do we get to the middle ground was the one that, that entered my consciousness today in particular, each time it's different. Um, and I try to listen harder every time. Thank you for that reading. And thank you to all of our readers today in our new books showcase. Uh, congratulations to all of you for your collections. Today, we've heard the poetry of Pratiba Castle, Crystal Stone, Raymond Johnson, and we just heard from Martina McGowan. Please consider, my friends, using some of your hard-earned currency to buy at least one collection. I always say, you know, why not all of them from our poets 
for yourself or for a beloved, because um, honestly, you know, what better gift is there than poetry? Really, what better gift is there than poetry? Crystal knows that in her 14 minute and 10 second <laughs> TED talk. I feel like you echo that message. You know, what better gift is there than poetry? It's really great, folks. Well, if I didn't know any better, I would think that May was National Poetry Month with all the reading schedule that, you know, I keep seeing everywhere. And certainly um, I wanted to share with you of a few that I'm hoping to attend, you know, this week. So you have a little preview of what's possible out there. And also feel free to post your events, your readings or happenings on our Cultivating Voices Live Poetry Facebook group page. We, you know, we wanna know where you are, where you're reading uh, so that maybe we too can be in the audience. Well, tomorrow, Monday, if you care to spend your time in Cork, Ireland, and who wouldn't? It's the very famed Ovale with your five word challenge. Um, they have this great five word challenge writing prompt that starts out the reading and featured poets, Dovan Olongan and Julie Field. That will be 12.30 Pacific, 3.30 Eastern, 8.30 PM over in Ireland. Tuesday night, you have, if you've never listened to Tim Green, the Rattle Master on Rattlecast, you are really missing something. This week's guest is Michael Mark. And I actually listened to Tim Green this morning on Poets um, Respond. I, I love, I love his program. That's Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's the rattle cast. And Thursday, head on over. I have a lot of Irish readings this week. I'm going to over in Ireland Thursday at 10.30 Pacific, that'll be 6.30 over in Ireland. It's Over the Edge from Galway, launching the publication of the really wonderful literary journal, Skylight 47. And then every Thursday in Limerick, Ireland, it's Lime Square at 12 noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, that's 8 p.m. So you can go to Over the Edge in Galway and heads on south to Limerick, double header. That's with your hosts, Dora Cypher and Lauren Donovan. It's a really wonderful community there. On Friday, our dear friend, Ann Walsh Donnelly is launching her newest collection from Fly on the Wall Press. That's at, gonna be at 12 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. over in Ireland. Saturday, my friends, feel free to join me and Headmistress Press as we team up to bring you the collectibles. This month's feature is J.P. Howard featuring the work of Pat Parker. It'll be a great reading. That is 12 Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Ireland. And then next Sunday, please come back here to join us for a truly special poetry event. It's our poet's focus on the theme of witness, a conversation with three generations of Asian American women poets with former poet laureate of San Francisco, Janice Mirakitani, poet laureate of Albuquerque, Mary Oishi, and Tanya Ko Hong. And a final remember that later this month on Cultivating Voices, mark your calendars, May 23rd, we return for our new book showcase with the poetry fab four of Risa Denenberg, Kelly Russell Agadin, Diane Zeus, and Mancho Alvarado. That will be on location from the banks of the Hood Canal in Port Ludlow, Washington. I'm gonna travel to bring you the reading. May 30th, more watery work as we bring you Salmon Poetry, 40 at 40, a 40th anniversary celebration of the celebrated International Poetry Press 
with your special guest host, founder and managing director of Salmon Poetry, Jesse Lendeni. Well, as always, as I said, feel free to post your event, readings, and happenings on our Cultivating Voices live poetry group page. All of our readings are curated with poetry love and the love of poetry. And you can register for all of our readings on our event pages each week to join us live here in Zoom or watch us live from our Facebook group page. I want to thank you for joining us today on um, this fabulous new books showcase. And as always, I want to thank Don Krieger and Kim Ports Parsons for their dedication to this weekly poetry oasis that we bring together every Sunday. Well, I'm Sandy Uno and your host of Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. I'm sending peace and wellness to all of you from wherever you're joining us today or watching. And until next time, my friends, please be safe and safe travels. And of course, keep writing. We'll see you next time.